right, so let's get into bearing problems because you guys love bearing problems. Uh, we're going to use vectors to find speed and direction yeah, here. Areas. So we have an airplane that's traveling at a speed of 724 kilometers per hour at a bearing of north 30 degrees east. So if we draw a vector for this plane, it's going north. 30 degrees east. So that means your 30 degrees is right here. Okay, and that is from your vertical. So your 30 is right here. Um, your wind velocity is 32 kilometers per hour from the west. So if it's coming from the west, that means it is going in this direction, like so. So if we make a vector that's coming from the west, it's going, there's no bearing, it's just going straight. It's from the west, that means it's going to the west. Um, sorry, it's going to the east. Now we need to put our speeds in for each of these. So for your wind, that's going to be 32 kilometers, which is your magnitude of your vector. And for your uh, airplane, that is traveling at 724 kilometers. Now what we need to do is we need to find the resultant speed and direction of the plane. Well, we've drawn vectors before, where if this is our vector P, and we'll call the blue vector our vector W, then you have a vector that starts uh, where your p vector starts and ends where your w vector ends. This is called your p plus w. That is your plane vector plus your wind vector. So what we need to do is we need to find your speed, which is going to be the magnitude, and then we're going to need to find the direction that the plane is actually going. So we're going to make a little table here. And in our table we're going to include our three different vectors, and then we're going to in Sorry, our, yeah, our three different vectors, but then we're also going to include our horizontal components, so that'll be your x, and your vertical components for your uh, for your vectors. So the first vector we have is our plane vector. The next vector we have is our wind vector, and then the final vector that we have is our p plus w or our plane plus our wind vector. So let me draw these down. Now this makes a lot more sense if you actually draw the table and try to organize your problems in this order as well. So for your plane vector, now we learned way back when that in order to find your x component, well you take your magnitude of your vector times the cosine of theta. So the magnitude of our plane vector is 724 kilometers per hour times the cosine of theta. Now, whenever you measure your theta here, that is measured from your horizontal. So if this is your horizontal, the if this is 30 degrees for your bearing, then the measure from your horizontal up to the plane, that is 60 degrees. So you don't put 30 and for your theta, you have to plug in the 60 degrees. So if we plug this into your calculator and make sure it's in degree mode, you get 362. Now we also have to do our vector for our vertical component, which is the magnitude times the sine of theta. So we're going to take 724 times the sine of our theta, and our theta is going to end up being 60 degrees here. Also, actually let me put that in a different different color here. Alright, All right, so we're going to make our theta 60 degrees again, because it's the same as we use for our cosine. So we plug this into your calculator, you should get 627. So that would be your uh, horizontal component and your vertical component of your plane if you tried to find it in component form. Now let's do the wind. So the wind, well it is same magnitude, or sorry, you're traveling on a magnitude times the cosine of theta. So your magnitude is 32. You have a cosine. Now if you look at your degrees here, well this is traveling straight east. So it's traveling to like three o'clock on a clock or also at zero degrees. Okay, it's, if it's traveling due east, if you make your vertical, this is like your origin of your circle, 
then that is traveling at zero degrees. So if you find the 32 cosine of zero degrees, then that is 32, because that is 32 times a one. And then if we need to find our vertical component, this is 32, whoops, that got a little crazy. 32 times the sine of zero. So if we plug a zero degrees in for this, well the sine of zero is just zero. So 32 times zero is zero. Now, in order to find P plus W, notice the addition sign. That is where we just add your P value plus your W value. So 362 plus 32 gives us a 394. And then 627 plus zero is 627. That is your component of your P plus W. So what this really means is 394 comma 627. And if you think about it in terms of our picture, that means if you go to the right, draw a little triangle here, and then if you were to go up, this would be your 627. This would be your 394. Now, that got us almost to our answer. Now, in order to find out what your speed is then, your speed or your magnitude you're going to have to take the square root of your components. So we're going to take the square root of 394 squared plus 627 squared. So the speed of our plane, now think about this, would it be going faster or slower if you have a little bit of wind pushing it as it's going to the right, do you think it would be faster than 724 or a little bit slower? Well, if, the, if your plane's already going to the right and your wind pushes it, it's giving you a little bit of a push to go a little bit faster. So when you plug this in your calculator, you should get 740.5 miles per hour. And that should make a little bit of sense that it is faster than you were originally going. So there's your speed. Now to find your direction of your plane. Well, here is your triangle. In order to find your direction, you can find that by taking the arc tangent of your y over your x. So if your y is equal to your 627, or if you look at your triangle here, it's going to be 627 over 394. That's your x. That gives you 57.9 degrees. Now, here's where you have to be careful. That 57.9, that is right here. That is not our bearing. So in order to figure out what your bearing is, you need to take your theta is actually going to be 90 degrees minus your reference angle, which in this case is 57.9 degrees. So the bearing is going to end up being a 32.1 degrees, but you also need a statewide direction that would be in the northeast direction. <coughs> so to recap real fast, you need to draw a picture of your vectors. Okay, make sure you draw your bearings, you put your 30 in the correct angle. You have your magnitude, which is your speed, then you have a wind vector, you have a speed here, going in the correct direction, and then you have finally a P plus W. So you make your table, you have your two columns, you have your vertical or your horizontal components and your vertical components, you have your plane, you have your wind, you have your plane plus your wind. In order to find your component forms of your P and your W, you take your magnitude times the cosine of your angle, magnitude times the cosine of your angle, or sine of your angle. Same thing for wind and P plus W, you just add them together. That gets you to where you find your magnitude, which is taking the square root of your P plus W vector, because that's your new vector. And then you find your direction by taking the arc tangent of your Y over your X, and then you have to subtract that from 90. So that is one of the best bearing problems you will ever see.